Hello, Alex here, and in this video we're going to talk about one of the more ignored or forgotten film development chemicals. I know I kind of said that about stop bath, but this is on another level. Hypoclearing agent, and what you need to know about it in terms of safety, handling, and disposal. This video is sponsored by the folks at thephotoshop.ie, who have partnered with me for this educational video and video series, and in this case they provided me with the bag of HCA that I'm using for this video. We'll talk more about them later, but for now, let's get into it. As always, I'm going to start with a legal disclaimer. This is not official legal advice and nothing I say supersedes your local regulations or guidelines. The opinions expressed within this video are my own professional, educated, but still opinions and do not constitute advice of any sort on the behalf of the folks at the photoshop.ie. If you have any general questions, you can ask them in the comments down below or contact me by Instagram DM or by email. But for more serious pressing matters, contact your local city council or other regulatory board. As we go through the video and talk about safety, handling, disposal, and of course, cost, I'm going to give Hypoclearing Agent a rating out of three, and we'll tally those scores up at the end of the video. What is HCA? Why would you use it? And why have most people never heard of it? HCA basically serves as a chemical scrub, cleaning chemical residues off of your film after fixing or after the bleaching step in a reversal process. By doing this, you reduce the required wash time after fixing or after bleaching significantly. In the case of fixing, you can bring a 20 to 40 minute wash time down to three to five minutes, saving both time and obviously tremendous amounts of water. For the sake of a quick wash with HCA, that can be worth it depending on how much film you process or how long you need to actually wash the types of film that you specifically use. It is also extremely common to use HCA in dark rooms to clean off any fixer residue from prints. However, you should not use it with resin coated or RC prints. You don't really need to use this stuff with modern films with rapid fixers like Ilford Rapid Fixer that are based on ammonium thiosulfate. Not really sure why, it just turns out you don't really need it that much. The name HypoClear is slightly misleading because Hypo classically refers to older sodium thiosulfate based fixers where modern rapid fixers use ammonium thiosulfate. However, the action of HCA is to remove thiosulfate from your film or your prints. So the name is a bit misleading and some companies like Adox have their own equivalent to Kodax HCA where they actually call it ThioClear to make that a bit clearer, <laughs> clearer. After fixing your film, the initial rinse will remove 99 point something percent of the ammonium thiosulfate or sodium thiosulfate in your fixer solution. And what the HCA does is basically provide a ridiculously concentrated solution of sodium sulfite, which will just outcompete the few spots available in the porous gelatin in your film or in your print, and then just push the thiosulfate out and put sulfite in its place. But then you would just have something else in the film or in the print, so what good is that? The difference is that sulfite does not bind very strongly to the gelatin and is very easily washed off with just a couple of minutes of washing versus tens of minutes for thiosulfate. The best analogy I've been able to come up with is if you microwave pasta in a tomato based sauce and then you have a red stain in the, the actual plastic. You can get rid of the sauce, you can get rid of 99.9% .9 of it, but unless you use some kind of stronger specialized cleaning agent that last bit of red stain is not leaving and that plastic is staying stained red forever. In the case of film and prints, that thiosulfate will eventually degrade to just elemental sulfur, an off-white yellowish powder, which smells and just, you know, it adds a bit of color to the film or the print that you don't want there. So you might as well get rid of it. You don't want that red tomato stain on your plastic lunchbox. You can live with it, but long-term, it looks nicer if you get rid of it. In the case of fixer, you remove the fixer from your tank, you rinse for just 15 to 30 seconds, and then you do a one and a half to two minute wash with the working solution of HCA. Then you rinse for five minutes and you're done. And your film is thoroughly cleared of thiosulfate, meaning it's just gonna be as chemically clean as can be for long-term storage. 
Times for the actual HCA wash are provided for film and as well as single and double weight papers. However, it is not recommended to use this stuff with resin coated or RC papers. Kodak HCA is supplied in the form of a powder, which is to be dissolved to make a 3.8 liter or one US gallon stock solution, which is then either diluted down one plus four to a, a working solution of uh, 19 liters or five US gallons. You can either make up that 19 liter five gallon solution straight away if you know you're going to be using it on large scale. But if you're not using it on like basically industrial scale, it's better to make up that 3.8 liter one gallon solution and then dilute portions as required for washing your film as you go or your prints. About 75 to 80% of the powder is just sodium sulfide. This is the active ingredient, which I mentioned will just displace the thiosulfate, permanganate or dichromate from the gelatin in your film or prints, and then which itself can be easily washed away later. Then about 15% of the powder is sodium metabisulfite, which is basically just a, a precursor to sodium sulfite. When you dissolve it in water, it forms sodium sulfite. I'm not sure why they use that versus just using more sodium sulfite, but I'm sure there's a perfectly good reason. The other two ingredients are EDTA, which many of you may be aware of. It's a chelating agent which binds and basically sequesters metal ions. So it will bind to those metal ions present in the water, wherever they come from, and then just prevent them from actually coordinating to forming complexes with the sulfide or metabisulfide, preventing them from doing their actual job. The last ingredient in less than 5% concentration in the powder is sodium citrate. Honestly, I don't know why it's there. Oh my God, the capacity, right? This stuff, this one bag, this 500 grams made up to 3.8 liters, one US gallon, and then diluted one plus four. This stuff can fully hypoclear 800 to 1000 rolls of film, 800 to 1000 eight by 10 prints, or 3200 to 4000 four by five inch sheet film sheets. That is absolutely I say wild and ridiculous a lot. That is like an order of magnitude more than you would expect to get out of a bag like this. It's absolutely wild that it's so potent and you only need so little to actually get this effect. Obviously then, it's not meant to be used one shot, which makes it even more economical, obviously. A lot of people do or use it two or three times because once you dilute it down from the stock solution to the working solution, the shelf life does go down quite a bit especially if you expose it to oxygen for any significant length of time. Nevertheless, you're probably not getting the full 1000 rolls of capacity out of this bag before it just oxidizes and stops being effective. But if you get even a 10th of that, that's pretty good. The 3.8 liter or one US gallon stock solution has a shelf life of about three months if kept in a full tightly stoppered bottle. The working solution, if kept in a tray, as in, in a dark room, has a life of about 24 hours. So the stuff is extremely sensitive to oxygen, as I mentioned, which makes sense because sodium sulfide is an oxygen scrubber. That's something it's known to be used for, is scavenging oxygen, which destroys itself. There is no shelf life quoted for the working solution, if kept in a full, tightly stoppered bottle, protected from air. But chances are, it's not that long. I would say maybe one to two, maybe three months if you're very careful about sealing the container, use a non-porous plastic, and if you use something like a protectant spray. As we get into the actual safety handling and disposal sections, it is worth remembering that the SDS refers to the powder as it is provided to you, not the end solution that you're going to be working with. In the same vein that the fixer SDS we talked about in the Ilford Rapid Fixer video doesn't actually discuss the silver because that's not what comes in the bottle that you buy. Regardless, this one does note that the powder is both corrosive and an irritant. The powder itself is quite fine. You can hear it when you shake the powder around in the bag. And that means it could quite easily disperse into the air. One of the hazards associated with this stuff is that it is extremely damaging to your eyes. So eye protection, I would say is mandatory in this case because even a small bit of very fine dust in the air could easily get into your eyes and cause serious damage. Generally, nothing too wild here, but it is worth noting that fine powders of anything, not just photographic chemicals, can present a fire or explosion hazard depending on the concentration in the air. 
So it is recommended to work with this stuff outside when you're making up the initial solution, as well as wearing realistically a dust mask to keep it out of your lungs and eye protection to keep the powder out of your eyes. You can't be too careful, realistically, you don't want this kind of stuff in your eyes or in your lungs. And it's, I mean, if you have a problem wearing a face mask at this point, I mean, aside from the corrosion, there's nothing really too worrisome here. So the first aid measures are pretty generic. If you get it in your eyes, wash it out for at least 15 minutes, then seek medical help. If you get it on your skin, wash it off. If you ingest it, seek medical help if you feel unwell. Pretty standard kind of stuff, nothing too worrisome. Accidental release. Remember that this refers to not just the powder and not solution, but also doesn't really talk about scale for the most part. This is, however, one of the few SDSs I've seen recently that does give a small section about small scale spills. So say like a half kilo, a pound or so of the powder. And for small spills, it's it gives you an idea that it's pretty much not that bad if it's not in your eyes and mouth. Just sweep it up or vacuum it use a cloth to clean up any residue, wipe surfaces down, and then just throw that stuff in the bin. And I'm telling you now, it can just go in the bin if you do spill a little bit of the powder. Don't freak out about it, it's gonna be okay. With regards to exposure controls, the TWA numbers quoted here are for like occupational hazards, people who work with this stuff on large or industrial scale, like 40 hours a week kind of thing, doesn't really apply to us. And it basically just repeats what I said, you know, Wear appropriate chemical resistant clothing. Don't wear your nicest shirt in our case. Protect your eyes, protect your face. You know, maybe use nitrile gloves or latex gloves. It wouldn't matter which one you use when you're handling the solution, if that makes you feel more comfortable. But the solution itself isn't going to be that bad either. The point is that you don't need to take any extreme measures with regards to PPE with this stuff, which is a good thing. Toxicologically, I would say this stuff is just of no concern whatsoever. The LD50s, the lethal dose, 50%. Um, I mean, the values quoted here are in the grams per kilogram. Not a concern for us whatsoever. One important thing that it does note is that heating the powder can liberate sulfur dioxide gas, which is toxic and harmful. Basically, what that means in practice for us is when you're working with the powder or when you're storing it before you actually make up the solution, keep it away from sources of ignition like fire or like exposed wires, I guess, anything like that, which you shouldn't have, but you never know. Um, keep it away from open flames, don't smoke when you're working with the powder, that basic kind of stuff. Based on all of that, I'm going to give Kodak's HCA a two out of three for safety. The powder itself does present moderate risks, they're not insignificant, however, it's extremely easy to deal with them. A face mask, eye protection, make up the solution outside, the risks are essentially negated. Then once you have the actual solution, it's not really a concern. As I said, you could wear nitrile or latex gloves if you wish, but I wouldn't say they're required or even necessarily recommended. When it comes to handling, honestly, section seven of the SDS says absolutely nothing I haven't already mentioned. Basic PPE, ventilated area, avoid prolonged exposure, wash your hands. Fine, there's nothing really worth saying there. When it comes to stability and reactivity, the sulfites and metabisulfites are basically relatively chemically inert for our purposes and not worrisome in any way. The only thing to be aware of is that potential liberation of sulfur dioxide gas if you heat or burn the stuff. So again, keep it away from sources of ignition. Not a big deal. The main issue with handling is the possible liberation of fine dust particles into the air, which again can be easily avoided, but that risk is still there. So I'm gonna give Kodak HCA two out of three for handling. Again, making up the powder, it's not without risks. The powder itself does have some physical as well as chemical risks or hazards associated with it from corrosion to possible fire. But once you make it up in the solution, again, it's fine. I mentioned that this stuff is extremely sensitive to oxygen and that any level of oxygen exposure will slowly destroy it over time because the sodium sulfide and then the metabisulfite, which turns into sulfite when you dissolve it in water, will react with oxygen pretty aggressively over time. Sulfate, which is what is formed by oxidation of the sulfite, is not hazardous of, in any way on our like household scales. So if you want to get rid of it once it's, you know, maybe looking a bit funky or not, you think it's not working as well, 
just leave it in an open topped container or in a tray for a few hours, you know, away from children, pets, clearly labeled, be sensible kind of situation. Then it can just go down the sink. Sulfates, yeah, down the sink, no problem. Like, don't even think about it. Less harmful than Ilfo stop because it's not even acidic. Sections 12 and 13 of the SDS don't really say anything worth mentioning. I mean, it's not hazardous to the aquatic environment. General disposal considerations, even for the undissolved powder, are pretty benign and not really worth worrying about. So yeah, once it's dead, make sure it's dead by exposing it to air for a while, then <clears throat> down the sink, donezo. For those very simple reasons, I'm going to give Kodak HCA 3 out of 3 for disposal. So the last section, cost. I mean, this stuff will last quite a while, probably a lot longer than three months if stored well. As I said before, like using something like a protectant spray, a butane propane based spray, just to displace oxygen in the bottle or container that you're storing it in. If you do that, it's gonna last a long time. Again, you're probably not gonna get 1000 rolls out of it before it stops being usable. But if you get 50, 100, two or 300 rolls worth or prints worth out of it, I mean, you've got your money's worth. This stuff is about 15 euros for a bag. I mean, that works out to what? Less than two cents per roll of film or per eight by 10 print. I mean, the, the most expensive part of this stuff realistically is the thing that you're gonna store it in. I mean, yeah, three out of three for cost. I don't know what else to say. It's stupid cheap. Before I do go and tally the scores up, I need to give, of course, a massive thanks to the folks at the Photoshop.ie for sponsoring this video and for partnering with me on this educational video series. We've gotten some pretty good feedback so far and I'm really glad that I'm able to work with them. The range of products on their website is always growing and their prices are not just reasonable, but straight up competitive, even to some of the European online retailers. And that is extremely impressive. My own most recent purchase included a couple of rolls of Adox Scala 50 along with the Scala Reversal Kit that I want to get into in the coming weeks or months, depending on weather and whatever. Because uh, this stuff, you know, it needs the right conditions to shoot and I want to take my time, make sure I actually know the reversal process a bit better before I really get into it. So thanks again to the folks at Photoshop.ie and now we're going to tally up the scores for Kodak's Hypo Clearing Agent. Two for safety, two for handling, three for disposal and three for cost for a total score of 10 out of 12. Kodak Hypo Clearing Agent or any other thiosulfate clearing agent might not really be worth it depending on the types of film or fixer that you use, but if you do a lot of darkroom printing, you use certain films that are quite stubborn to wash, or if you even just do a bit of reversal processing like with something like the Adox Scala kit and maybe you run out of the Hypo Clearing bath or you do your own homemade reversal process. This could be a pretty powerful and certainly highly economical addition to your chemical arsenal. I think I'm probably going to continue using Hypo Clearing Agent after making this video because I have the space for it, the benefits are pretty clear, and I do have some films where it's probably going to be extremely beneficial. For the right person who isn't working on very small amounts of film, highly recommend it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.